Okay, C2 is silver and back with you. Now, uh, the main difference between a C corp and an S corp, uh, C is a closed corporation, and again, you're subject to double taxation on your corporate profit and your personal income tax. The S corp, however, um, allows you uh, to have something called uh, pass through SP, which means you will not be subject to double taxation. So the S corp, from a tax purpose, uh, perspective is actually going to be your best situation. However, uh, if you form an LLC or a corporation, it's going to be better for your taxes because you'll have more write-offs available to you and uh, you'll get a benefit right off the bat just for forming an LLC. You get like a 20% discount uh, off your taxes for just forming an entity other than a sole proprietorship. And again, remember, your main reason uh, for creating this legal entity is to protect your personal assets, uh, your stocks, your bonds, maybe you have gold, uh, maybe you have crypto coins, you know, whatever you have, or real estate, then you're going to want to have uh, something on top of your estate plan which works in conjunction with that. And that may be fairly complicated. Uh, you may want to go to a lawyer to get that, or a paralegal who has experience uh, joining your legal entity and your estate plan. So you might create uh, your living trust, and it should be owned by your corporation, uh, by simply just having a contract uh, between your LLC and your corporation. That's pretty easy to set up. Uh, but remember, if you're trying to attract venture capital, in your company, like say you see on Shark Tank, then you're going to want an S Corp. C Corp is not going to really do much good out there in the funding world or if you're trying to attract uh, venture capital. You're going to need an S Corp. Uh, that's what investors look for. Uh, they figure that you're more astute and a little bit more sophisticated if you have an S Corp versus a C Corp. And of course, they can take advantage of that pass through corporation. Uh, so they're not subject to double taxation uh, vis-a-vis their investment. So that's pretty much everything I want to talk about as far as state planning and uh, entity formation. Now, in addition to creating your corporation or your LLC, if you wanted to open up a bank account in the name of your LLC or corporation, you're going to need an EIN which is an employer identification number. I've heard of law firms charging people up to $10,000 for an EIN. Well, folks, it can be had for free. You can go online and uh, go to the IRS website, irs.gov, and in the search window, type in EIN online or EIN online application. It's going to take about 10 minutes to create. Now, you need to have your corporate name first, so I recommend uh, making sure that your corporate name is available. Uh, you can do a name search in your jurisdiction, or you can even reserve your name uh, in most jurisdictions. I know in California, for like 30 bucks, you can reserve your name uh, if you're worried about somebody else taking it. Uh, try to avoid common names. Don't use your name uh, in your corporate title, because remember, they're trying to provide asset protection so why give people more information than they already need? Uh, come up with some fictitious name uh, that may be representative of your industry, but it's not going to give any clues into your personal identity because then you're, you're basically just wasting time and money on creating an entity. You're just going to put your name on it so then anybody says, oh, uh, you know, C.J. Silverman has a corporation and he named it the C.J. Silverman Corporation. Well, why did he do that? I mean, he obviously is looking for lawsuits. Um, maybe he's bored and he wants people to sue them. I don't know. But the point is that you don't want to use your personal name on your corporation, uh, whether it's in Texas or you know, California. Uh, Delaware provides some benefits uh, if you're looking for further asset protection. Why? Well, in the state of Delaware, it's against the law to divulge the name of the corporate officers. So you have that extra added protection. I believe Nevada and Wyoming have a similar edict 
but I'm not positive. I know that um, many people form a corporation in Delaware, and if you do, uh, then you're going to have to have a agent for process of service in Delaware. Uh, you can get that on an annual basis for very inexpensive. Of course, uh, if you're incorporating in the state where you live, then you can in fact be your own uh, agent for service, and then you wouldn't have to spend that extra money. So, uh, again, that's pretty much everything in a nutshell. That's your state planning guidelines and how to create uh, your legal entity. If you have any questions, you can always call me at area code 424-249-0059. My office is in Los Angeles, California, so I'm on West Coast time. Uh, most of the time I'm around uh, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., like any other business. Uh, I'm never going to be available on a Saturday. Sundays I'm, I may be available, but uh, just call me up, and if you have a burning question, let me know. And if it's regarding uh, creating uh, an estate plan, uh, such as a living trust, and you don't want to do it yourself, then of course we can help you with that, uh, or we can refer you uh, to a lawyer or paralegal in your area if you feel more comfortable uh, with having somebody in your in your own uh, neighborhood there. But uh, again, we've been doing this for 35 years. It's it's not rocket science. Uh, though you do need to plan before you start creating your documents. Uh, you need to know who your ultimate trustees are going to be. Uh, you need to know how you can distribute your property. And then, of course, finally, uh, you're going to have to have a plan for funding your trust and transferring your property into your trust. Uh, if it's real estate, again, uh, you're going to need to have a quick claim deed. You're going to need to have your legal description your assessor's parcel number, and your preliminary change of ownership. We hope that you will, in fact, create an estate plan uh, to take care of your children, to take care of your spouse, and to avoid probate. Because, listen, uh, probate is a long, drawn-out, uh, extensive process, and also it's public. So everything that happens in your probate case uh, is on public display. And anybody could look in your file and find out uh, what your earnings are and what your assets are. So if you're a private individual, uh, like a celebrity or a high net worth individual, and you don't want people knowing about uh, your finances or even um, who's going to get your property, then, of course, it's always best to have an estate plan with a revocable living trust or an irrevocable living trust, your durable power of attorney for assets, your durable power of attorney for health care, and your pour over will. Now, one more comment. Uh, certain documents must be notarized, and others need to be witnessed. So your living trust, your durable power of attorney for health care, your durable power of attorney for assets, and your quick claim deed all must be notarized in most states. Most states will allow you to have witnesses to your durable power of attorney, um, but it will also allow you to have your pour over will witnessed by two disinterested people. What does that mean? It means two people that are not taking uh, under the will. So usually a non-relative or a neighbor or somebody at work uh, will sign off and say, hey, uh, CJ has the capacity to create a will. He understands what we call the nature and extent of his bounty. He knows who his children are, and he knows how much money he has in the bank and what kind of property he has. So uh, certain documents must be notarized. Well, CJ, you told me that I'm not going to be filing any documents with the court, so how do I preserve them? Well, what I recommend doing is putting all of your original documents in a fireproof safe deposit box and also providing your trustees with those documents. Some people uh, give it to their beneficiaries. That's up to you. I mean, of course, if you're having a disproportionate distribution amongst your beneficiaries, you may not want them to know that uh, before you pass away because there could be a lot of fighting and bickering and lawsuits, 
So you may hold off on doing that, but uh, at the very least, you're going to want your alternate trustees to have copies of your trust so they know how uh, your trust is going to be distributed when you and your spouse pass away. All right, I hope that answers the questions that you might have. Again, if uh, other questions come up, please feel free to contact me. My name is TJ Silverman. I'm an adjunct professor of law, and I teach classes on essential document preparation and how to become a paralegal. Uh, they change the name to legal document assistant for certain laws and regulations that you must follow. Uh, if you want to provide document creation services for people, I want to teach you what to do. All right, have a great day, and I hope you create a reasonable estate plan for your loved ones. Again, if you run into any uh, questions, please call me at 424-249-0059.